Ah, welcome to uh, to day number two of our of our mini course. And uh, today, I want to uh, spend the first part of the hour talking about typing mathematics because yesterday we were talking about typing straight copy. I have to. Uh, it occurred to me in the middle of the night that I lied in one respect yesterday, and I and I, being a very honest man, I have to admit that the, what I told you about quotation marks is is almost always true but not always true namely that if you type two things to get opening quotes but um, that's it depends on the font you're using some fonts don't have that don't have that built in the same thing with dashes if, if you're using a the, our so-called typewriter type font and then you type in a uh, uh, two hyphens you get two hyphens but if you're using a, uh, an ordinary kind of font, you type two hyphens, you get an, e an end dash. And so each font actually is what tells the it, it, it either the, the designer of the font has told tech what uh, what combinations are, are there. Tech doesn't have these things built into it. So um, uh, so people can make up uh, 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 fonts that do that do strange things like our, our Russian our Cyrillic font. Uh, has special combinations that you type to get special letters in Russian. In fact, on the Russian font, if you type two uh, two open quote marks, you get a uh, a Russian-looking quotation marks, which is which or French. Uh, it's a little little uh, v, little tip V V symbols and stuff. So so each font has its own built-in uh, uh, things like that. So uh, otherwise, tech couldn't possibly know uh, how much space to 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 leave out between those two quote marks uh, for each font. It would look funny in some fonts. Another. So the designer of the font really tells tech all about all these multiple letter combinations that are that are there. Okay. Otherwise, I think I told the truth yesterday. Now, today I want to get in mathematics, and I and I and I decided that what I would do is I'd go to my my beloved calculus book that I used when I was a freshman in, in college, um, and, and uh, since this is the kind of mathematics that seems to be common to so many technical papers, and this this book was is actually a quite a, a beautiful piece of typography, and that's one of the reasons I guess that I always. Uh, that I went with the publisher I did because I, I remember that, that, that I liked the books that they printed uh, when I was a student. And uh, so I looked at the book and I said it's about 800 pages long. So um, uh, I'll just choose, look at page, I'll use, go to page 400 right in the middle of the book and I'll use that for, for my example. So I looked at page 400 and then, uh, but I have to tell you this because I get, you know, I'm being very honest, you see, I, at least I'm, I'm telling you I'm being honest. And, uh, and on, but on page 400, it was a little bit too complicated for what I really wanted to to, to present on the first on the first lecture. So I decided, okay, well let's look at page 200. Um, okay, so page 200 is what I want to start out with as a, as a first example of mathematics. We'll get to page 400 later, though. So page 200, can we have it on the screen so you can see what uh, what we happen to be in page 200? It's called Applications of Integration to Physics, and it starts out with three illustrations. Well. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to do these illustrations with tech. In fact, you, you can't. I mean, tech isn't going to draw a very, very nice uh, line like that. However, uh, uh, one of our grad students did a thesis this uh, last spring, uh, uh, which actually would, would make all three of these figures very nicely. And, and another one of our students, uh, David Wall, if you look at his thesis in the library, he actually did all of his uh, illustrations in his thesis with the Metafont program as if these were letters of the alphabet and and, uh, and, and made a big type uh, font, uh, especially for his thesis, uh, just containing the illustrations in it. But anyway, we're going to start on the next line after the illustrations. And uh, uh, yeah, just to say that, that uh, work is in progress on how to do technical illustrations also, but for now, let's assume that we've got a good um, uh, art department that's going to do this, uh, this all beautifully for us with their airbrushes and all this thing. Now, um, um, okay, so um, now I want to uh, go through this page, and um, maybe I'll try an experiment where I'll just ask you to um, tell me. Uh, I might go through the class here, and, um, and unless people are too are too nervous about it, and I'll just ask them to uh, uh, you know tell me how we would type each of these things, and then I'll uncover the answer as I as we go. Let's see if I can set up a little thing here. Now, um, okay. Um, uh, so let's see if I can I, if I can work this out. Um, so I started out my file by saying input basic. That's what I suggest that you all do on your sample file. Um, then the next line, um, uh, I, 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 just, I 
I added this next line afterwards. I, I saw that I was going to need a, a new font down here that isn't in basic. See where it says example one, caps and small caps font. And so I, I, I input a new font there. Uh, forget that for the time being. And the next line is something I told you about yesterday that I could use a double arrow. This is a special incantation that you can put at the beginning of a file. Uh, you don't have to copy it down now because there will be a handout later that has this all in it. Um, uh, uh, you don't have to copy down any of this, actually, uh, I think. Uh, you can just pay attention to, to uh, you don't have to, to worry about copying. Uh, but this is an incantation which says when I type a double arrow, it's going to, it's going to tell tech not to break between, uh, between those two words at the end of a line if, if, unless it's absolutely necessary. So, so I started out that way. And then um, now, I, now we've got to get to the, to the beginning of this, of this line here. Well, this first sentence, of course, there's nothing... There's nothing very, uh, uh, very interesting about it. it. It starts out, so so we just type it in, right? Other applications of the moment of inertia to physical problems. Are How do we get the paragraph indent done? Okay, the paragraph indent is is part of ba of basic format. Um, basic format sets up a certain paragraph indentation. Uh, it's actually, I think, it's. Um, about almost two M's, which is uh, maybe too, too, too large. If you don't like it, you have to change it, and you say par indent one M or whatever you, you want for your paragraph indentation. But BASIC has its own idea as to what a good paragraph indentation is, and it's sort of a style that's been preset for you. All of these other facts of the style, though, can, uh, can be changed. Uh, 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 for now, we're just going to assume that somebody, somebody gave us their favorite style. So, so BASIC, every, every paragraph will be indented what the problem is, if you don't want it indented, then you have to say, don't indent. Okay. Now, so a blank line um, uh, at, the, at the beginning, I wouldn't have even needed this blank line because at the very beginning, um, tech is ready for a new paragraph. But, but a blank line ends a, ends a paragraph and puts you back in the, into the condition you were at the beginning. Okay, so so at the very beginning, so it's always so so. In other words, the fact that I typed this capital O here, and it wasn't preceded by a backslash, it says oh, this is the beginning of a paragraph. Anything, you know, when I said center line or something else like that, it wasn't starting up a paragraph in yesterday's examples. But this capital O is what switches it into a new paragraph. Then when we get to the end of that paragraph, there's a blank line there. It goes back to the to the starting condition, uh, saying uh, you know, so. Then we can give instructions like give a little extra space. Uh, it was what's coming in. Okay. So now, um, okay. Now, <clears throat> does anybody remember what I do when I get to this next line? When you say, see, oh, look, uh, I guess we need it a little bit larger. Yeah. I'm going to tip it a little bit so that you can see more of the line. It's okay in your screen. That's okay. This I'll I'll tip, tip. I think it's okay. You can. Um, I, it's neat to, to look out at the audience here and see everybody. So. Okay. Now, if I go like this, what do you do? Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, anyway, uh, what do we do to get this in italics? Mecha this is a book by Sears of Mechanics, Heat, and uh, Well, I'll go on Sound. Okay. Now, how do I? How am I going to get that into italics? Is anybody? Uh, uh, and let me let me. I'll go sequentially through, and, and don't. I hope you don't mind if, when when it comes to your turn, it's either a very hard or a very simple question, because we just do it for fun. Uh, first, uh, put yeah. You know, pick up your, your mic and. Okay, I would I would write uh, open parentheses C Sears comma then begin with an open brace. Open brace, yeah. Slam uh, backslash S L space and then within the okay. group mechanics. Okay. Why do you say backslash S L? For slanted, slanted type. Okay, and mm -hmm. I, and and there's also, um, but this is in italic type. Um, oh, is this for uh, yeah. it? So so I haven't talked about the difference between slanted and italic type. There, but um, uh, in, uh, now slanted type is a, is, but um, and some people think think it's the same thing. Now there's two different styles of type. Um, one is. Um, uh, yeah. One is just like the ordinary Roman, but but it's tipped like your heads are tipped, right? And the other one is is quite a different style. Uh, the the beginnings of the letters go go in strokes like that and so on. And that's a that's um, italic. Now typically italic is used in mathematics. Let's take a look at here's an example of the tech output for this page. You see the X there. That's not, that's quite different from an X that you find. The M here is quite different from that M. Okay. But now up here is a slanted. Is, is an example of slanted type. You look at the um, at the A, for example. The, well, let's see. Do we have any anything? That, here's a here's an M. Do I have an M? No, just an N. Anyway, slanted slanted Roman type is is a different thing. So now now um, 
this is something that uh, that you that you, you might not like. Some somebody might might just prefer to do it the old way and just use italic. And there's a, and you'd say it for italic. Uh, I, uh, in this example, I used sl for slanted just to, to illustrate the difference so that I could tell you about the difference between italic and slanted. And uh, and uh, in the um, and I, I've been experimenting uh, now that uh, it's easy to do with computers. Uh, it was very hard to do with the old printing equipment, but now that it's easy, I was experimenting with with um, using Roman type for, for normal text, slanted type for emphasis or for titles of other books, and uh, italic type for mathematical symbols. The, the, the reason to have a distinction for this is, is important in mathematics, usually because a statement of a theorem or a main result is often in italics, the same as the variables. And you can't tell the difference between the, the, uh, the formulas and the italics in that case. But if you have slanted for the statement of the theorem, then the then the formula will still be distinguishable from this fr from the statement of the theorem, and um, on the other hand, people say, well, you shouldn't go overboard and change fonts all the time. Why well, have so many fonts? And it's true you can go overboard, but slanted seems to blend re reasonably well with Roman. And so uh, 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 some people have uh, have gone halfway, and they and they like to use slanted just for titles of books and things in the bibliography, which ten uh, um, uh, but they use uh, italics for emphasis and italics for formulas or something. Anyway, uh, you have this this uh, extra freedom now that you can use or or, or not if you if you want. And in this case, um, uh, I, in my example, I I use slanted, which comes out slightly different from this, which is italics. Okay. And now, where do you where do you put a close brace? Uh, you you said open brace before the mechanics, but where do you close that brace? I would put it after immediately after the D is sound. After the D in sound, okay, yeah. Otherwise, you get this comma in in italics. Now you do get the commas in <laughs> in mechanics, heat and sound. And uh, if so, if if that was actually it, you know, it, uh, if if you look closely here, I think those are italic commas, but it's very it's very difficult to notice, and and you can you can get a headache. And so yeah, yeah. Often they'll, they'll say uh, if. Um, Put an italic on a comma there, and they're not sure what to do on a semicolon. Sometimes they, sometimes they, sometimes they, they make the italic a semicolon. Sometimes they don't. Now, if this were a semicolon, um, we could get into trouble because the d, the d might might bump into the semicolon. Okay, and there's a little thing that, that I haven't done in this example because it was followed by a comma and it, it didn't arise. But if at the end, after you're doing italics, and you end with a d or something that that looks like it's going to stick out. Uh, before the, the right brace, you, you, you put backslash forward slash, which is called the italic correction. Add the italic correction, and this will add whatever whatever is the appropriate amount of space for the preceding letter, uh, uh, so that in case you wanted to follow that by a semicolon, it wouldn't bump into it. Okay, but you but but you do this like if if, if it's followed by. I'm I'm afraid you have to to use your own judgment on this. Sometimes you want it, and sometimes you don't, and. Um, and tech will do it. Will, will look sometimes. Some fonts will will say look for a quote mark follow or something like that uh, uh, w when it's more important sometimes. But uh, but uh, usually you catch this uh, if if, it, if there seems to be a little bit too uh, um, a bad clash all of a sudden. Then you you uh, you put in the italic correction. That's a refinement that uh, that that uh, sometimes you notice. Anyway, okay. Um, so that was a, that's an example. I, I'm sorry if I bring in always the hard cases. I, I, I'm being a little too honest, I think, sometimes uh, in this uh, in, in this lecture. But uh, you've got to uh, also realize that, that all rules have exceptions, and sometimes I, I probably go overboard in thinking the exceptions when I state the rule. Okay, now anything else uh, coming up here? Well, not really so bad. And then we get to a displayed formula. Now this is a little bit hard. I'm going to start with simple formulas and then go to the dis go back to the display in a minute. So we're going to come back to this display in a minute. But meanwhile. Let's go on to the next line. It says, in which I is the moment of inertia and I is a simple formula. You see that letter I all by itself? That is a formula. It's a mathematical formula. It happens to be a little rather trivial, uh, uh, but uh, it's a formula. So, Carolyn, how would you type that one? Any idea? Is it just a slanted I? Okay, you could say slanted eye because that's what it is—a slanted eye. But that's not psychologically right. Okay, uh, I don't know. let me tell, let me uh, explain. Um, uh, in the first place, in, in the first place, I want to um, point out that um, that, that uh, since mathematics used to cost a lot of money for typesetting, 
text convention about mathematics is that mathematical formulas are surrounded by dollar signs. Okay? <laughs> so, so, so you put a dollar sign before and after a mathematical formula. Okay? Now, try again. <laughs> Uh, a dollar sign, capital I, dollar sign. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so there's the end. so that so so that did it. Uh, in other words, it's a very simple formula. You just you know. Oh, can we have it on screen? Okay, so it's just dollar sign I dollar sign. All right. Now inside of the dollar signs, special rules apply. Yeah, in mathematics, special rules apply inside of dollar signs. Um, and tech will try, will will do what's 99 percent of the time the correct thing for for mathematics for for spacing and so on. When you first see a printer that hasn't done mathematics before and he comes up with formulas, they 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 look funny to a mathematician. But they, but it's hard to say exactly why they just look funny. And then the the printers who did know mathematics will have learned uh, over the years this uh, the the, uh, the conventions for uh, putting the right space in the right place. And, uh, and tech has also learned these rules, and, uh, and uh, again, all rules have exceptions, but 99% of the time it will, it will do the right thing for, the, for you in the formula. And uh, we'll see only one or two exceptions today, that, uh, uh, and, and uh, the, the manual t talks about them. Now, um, uh, of course, in a formula like this, there isn't much, uh, uh, much room for error. Uh, I think any printer would get that one right. Um, uh, although it, I, it, the italic correction was added, in fact. I mean, actually, the, 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 you know, the, uh, the I doesn't just, uh, the baseline of the I isn't centered. The italic correction is centered by 10. Now, um, another thing is inside of, in between, inside of the dollar signs, you have very, you don't, ha you don't have to care about spaces that you leave in there at all because tech thinks it knows better than you. So if you put spaces in there, it's going to ignore them anyway. Um, so, so you could say dollar signs space, capital I, space dollar sign, and it would still come out exactly the same. But the spaces before and after the dollar sign are, are part of your ordinary paragraph. And, those, and if you left out the space after that dollar sign, it would, it would you know, throw, throw the words together. I is, or something like that. It's I am, or something like that. Yeah. Now, um, OK, the next line, uh, we got, this is too simple to ask you, Jeff. So. Um, uh, so G is the acceleration due to gravity. L is the distance. Notice you use an L here. Um, that comes out to be your, your italic L. It's not confusing with a one like it is on a typewriter. Uh, but if somebody wrote a script L, and you def definitely want a script L, has a loop in it, then, there's a, then you have a control sequence for, for script L, um, SCRL, uh, which would give you the script L. Now, actually, um, uh, in, when I'm writing a manuscript and giving it to my secretary, I'll, I'll typically use a script L so that, um, uh, 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 so that it won't look like a one. Uh, but then uh, she'll type it as a script L, and then I'll, I'll remember saying, uh, actually, now that it's going into tech, uh, it's OK. You know, italic Ls look, look all right. And then I, and, and, you know, I, so now I tell her, when I mean a script L, I'll put a note on the side saying, I really mean a script L today. But usually, I, usually italic L's are are uh, are okay in in something like tech. But uh, on a, uh, on your other typewriter, maybe not, unless you had uh, some kind of a selectric where you're changing the balls or something. Okay. Question. A question. Uh, what you raise about script L and L, how do you actually type in a dollar sign or a backslash if uh, you want? Well, you, oh, yeah, part of the yeah. text. If you want a dollar sign, you say backslash dollar sign. In, in, like, if you wanted to say one dollar, you know, if you're if you're writing a very, uh, you're writing a, a paper on economics, you know, or something like that, and you say you have to say one dollar, like you you could well you could put this outside of them. So you have to get into math mode, and then this is treated as a special character in math mode. And there are a few of these symbols that are actually. Uh, 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 treated as, as mathematical symbols, uh, even though sometimes uh, uh, they aren't considered. I mean, you can you, there's a pound sign too, a sterling, I think you call it, S T R L. If you if you're in England, you know. If you, yeah. um, and uh, there's a, there's a sign that called section. These are all listed in the manual. In the uh, uh, there's a sign called section that goes like that, and that is considered a mathematic symbol. So you go you 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 put dollar signs around it in order to get it. Okay. Phyllis, you had a question? 
Remember to use the mic. L. Oh, that, that's uh, that's right. I type it more than you do. <laughs> In fact, that's right. I've forgotten this one completely. It's L S C R. Thanks very much. In fact, otherwise I wouldn't know because otherwise the, the uppercase there's an uppercase script L two, and if and if and Tech wouldn't know the difference between up between this and, and, and with an uppercase. So the Tech knows the difference if the first letter is uppercase or not, but the other letters uh, it doesn't. Um, so um, so you're right, uh, Elsker this way with a small L. Okay, right, thank you very much. Uh, that saved me at least an hour of sleep tonight. <laughs> okay, now, um, okay, now, now let's look ahead here. There's, look, there's a little extra space between these two, okay? So um, uh, how would we get that, Jeff? Oh wait, wait. I'm sorry. Before I go to that, no. Uh, this will be this will be your this will be your question. No, Jeff. Excuse me. Look at this dash in here in the figure 511. Do you see anything unusual about that? What, what, what is there anything that anything different to type when you type the C figure 5 511 here? It is slightly longer than a. Yeah. Right. This is an end dash. This is an end. This is one of the contexts where end dash is typically used. Printer won't use a hyphen there. A uh, good proofreader would, would think it looks funny with a hyphen there. Um, so how do you get an end dash? So you'd use two, two uh, yeah, small yeah. So that, hyphens. So, okay, right, okay. And then I also put a, I also put my double arrow between it because uh, that that that's uh, that's to avoid, first of all, getting an extra, extra too much space after the abbreviation F I G, and also it wouldn't break a line. Um, in case this came at the end of a line, it wouldn't put a break between fig and 511 at the be uh, on the next line. All right. Um, now, um, on the other hand, uh, uh, since this is an end dash, it's possible that it would break after after that and before the 11. That would be a pretty bad, a uh, pretty pretty lousy looking break. And if it did that, then I would go back and put that in an H box, so it's saying forbid the break. But it's the uh, chances are pretty bad that it'll that it'll ever happen. Uh, tech only chooses uh, hyphenating things if it's uh, if it's really necessary. So I didn't bother to to um, uh, to do that. Although although it's possible that I would get a break after that end dash that I didn't want. Okay, next question. <laughs> um, how would I get this ex little extra space here? Notice I did leave an extra line here because I came to the end of a paragraph. Okay, but now I got I want to leave a little extra space between this and the next paragraph. I would use a a backslash v skip. Okay. Of however many points. Of, of something, yeah. Okay, well, this is actually typical style here would be about three points extra. Three points doesn't seem like much. Uh, 72 points to an inch, three points is, uh, is one twenty-fourth uh, of an inch. Doesn't seem like much, but actually a little space actually is quite noticeable. Uh, uh, three points worth is certainly noticeable. So, I, so yeah, so V skip three points would get it. Now to get the next, uh, this next is in nine point type instead of ten point type. This example is in smaller type size, but basic only has one type size. So I just left it in the same type size. If you're setting up uh, though for a book, your, your font designer would tell you at this point, uh, uh, actually he'd probably have a special style that you would go through for examples and that would automatically switch you to nine point uh, type and change all the fonts. But I'm going to ignore that and just continue on in ten point. So let's go on. Uh, Example one. Does anybody know what I do to get uh, to start out example one without an indentation? You say no indent, right? So I say no indent. That's another way to start a paragraph. You say no indent, and that starts a par starts you off in a paragraph, and there's no indentation in the paragraph. Well, then, uh, then this caps and small caps. I said I I I invented a new. Excuse me, Don. Yeah, Arnie. Do you put a slash before the no indent. Here it is. Yep, here it is. Uh, you see that? No slash no indent. Because otherwise it would uh, it would type N O I N D. It would be indented even. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now here I had a caps and small caps uh, type used. Okay. And so um, and so I uh, so here I'm doing um, so so I switch to font M. Now the the backslash colon is a way of switching to a font. I could have also made up a, a control sequence. Meaning uh, switch to caps and small caps font, uh, but I just showed you this because I defined font capital M at the beginning of this page to be this font uh, CSC, CMCSC, which is a caps and small caps font. Um, 
the, the uh, when you if you go over the room by the Dover on the wall, there's a there's a uh, there's a book that that has examples of all the fonts that are available now. Uh, but I only needed this. Actually, it's not in basic, and I, I I don't expect you'll need it in your in your own case. This is just to, to mimic what's in the book. Um, uh, and uh, typically, the designer of the book would even would even set up a special control sequence just for examples. So you would say begin example or something like that, and then you type example one, and the control sequence would take care of everything. It would do the no indent. It would insert the three points, and it would it would also put a little extra space after it. And that's the next thing I want to talk about this quad here. Now. Now, this is a little extra space after that example one, and uh, the book designer, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and one quad of space is about the, w is the same width as an M dash, and, uh, but it's blank instead of being a dash, and, and um, it depends on the font that you're using. So I said quad here, that gave me a little extra space after the one. Well, now the rest is pretty straightforward, uh, but I, I, I'm just telling you the new things that are coming along. Here we have a simple math formula, L. Okay, now we're going to get to a real math formula in a minute. Um, so then we go into solution. Okay, you, you, you can already tell what's going to come there. Uh, we ended this paragraph, then we said v skip another three points, and then we said no indent and slanted for solution, or, or you could have had italic if you wanted for solution, and a quad there. Okay, now we're typing away, and now we get to a the real. Well, here's a here's a slightly more complicated formula. Can anybody read this? Suppose the rod coincides with the x-axis. Let's get this a little larger. We can, yeah. Okay, now here's x-axis. How would you type that? Uh, let's see. Here, I forget your name. Oh, you're next. Yeah, okay. You would put one dash in between. Uh, yeah, this is a dash. This is a this is a, a hyphen, not an m dash. But how do I get the x? I don't just type an x. Slash I L space X. Uh, well, I would use a dollar sign. Okay, but that is a you know. So, so I I I would use the dollar sign um, uh, and type it like this. Okay, X axis. Okay. Oops, I'm showing the next answer. <laughs> all right, X axis. All right. So that's again it's a simple math form, but you can combine that with with words if you want to, uh, because it just there's no space after it. Okay. Uh, now. Uh, where are we here? Okay, from x equals zero to all right. Now, this whole x equals zero. That that whole thing is an equation. And uh, so typically there'll be a slightly different spacing around the equal sign. But tech is going to be the one that's going to be responsible for putting in the uh, spacing, the proper spacing around the equal sign. Okay. Uh, so next, how would you type that little equation x equals zero? You have the mic. Dollar sign x. Yeah. Okay. But then I. But then I see. I, I do put the whole thing inside. So I say dollar sign x equals zero, and then another dollar sign, and then um, uh, tech will automatically know the right amount of spacing and how much it should gr it should grow and shrink uh, as uh, uh, as appropriate for for an uh, equal sign. Um, okay. From x equals zero to um, uh, x equals L, and so that's again uh, very simple. All right. I see that uh, it's going a little slowly, so I'm not going to go through the class anymore. Uh, uh, it was fun for a while, though. Now uh, divide. Okay, now <coughs> divide the interval. Can you can you uh, predict though with me exactly what's going to happen? Divide the interval zero less than or equal x less than or equal L into. Okay. So here we see a mathematical formula. So instinctively we type dollar sign, and then we type zero. Then less than or equal. We happen to have a less than or equal on our keyboard at sale. Um, it's very hard to live without it once you've had it. But uh, if you don't have it, you can make up a control sequence that will say LEQ or something for less than or equal. But in my examples here, I'm typing, doing it all at sale where we have our less than or equal symbol. And so we, um, we type that uh, this way. Zero less than or equal x less than or equal L. Okay. And uh, into... Subintervals of width delta x. Now here's a new. Here's something. We've got a Greek letter delta. Okay. Uh, now those people who are, are done a lot of technical typing will probably know from other people that it's called delta. Other people done a lot of technical typing never learned the name of it in Greek, but they know what it looks like. 
um, and they're used to uh, uh, and they're, they're used to it uh, uh, by 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 triangle or whatever they want to call it. Okay. Now, um, a list of all these symbols is in the back is in one of the appendices of the manual, and where you, where the, if you see a symbol that uh, somebody throws at you that you that you don't know the name of, you can look it up. It's Appendix F uh, for all the font information. It's in the back of there. Um, and then there's also uh, so it tells this is a capital Greek letter and it's called Delta and we type that as a capital capitalized D capital Delta okay X now um, um, I have to mention that some uh, I, I, I had a debate with this with one of the men who, who, who does a lot of typesetting of mathematical journals and and uh, he says that it's easier that, that that he prefers to have completely uh, sort of random names for all of these for all these special characters uh, that his typists learn, because that gives them a feeling of power over the mathematicians. The mathematicians, <laughs> uh, and 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 they get more job satisfaction from that. But uh, but uh, since we're 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 expecting also the mathematicians are going to understand a little bit about tech as well. So we we chose our names for these symbols the same as a mathematician would use a capital delta. Okay, so so delta x, uh, there there they are. They get uh, typeset that way. Okay, now here we have delta m, same thing. Question. Uh, question, yes. Yeah? Contain the space between the end of the delta and the x there. Okay, now what if I didn't put a space in there? Anybody got an idea? Error, Error. Error message, undefined control sequence, delta x. It doesn't understand delta x. Yeah. So here's a case where 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 it's where it, spacing inside the dollar sign did did make some difference. If there wasn't a space there, then the control sequence would change its name. Yeah. So 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 th that space was essential. You could have put two spaces there, or, or spaces before and before the delta, or something like that. It wouldn't have made any difference. But but uh, that one is necessary just because it's a control sequence, right? Okay. Um, so delta m the same thing. That delta m denote the mass be between x and x plus delta x. Okay. X plus delta x. You see that's typed in this obvious way. Okay. And the moment of inertia of delta m differs from x squared delta m by an infinitesimal. Now here is, I think, the only exception. Well, one of the one of two exceptions I'll talk about today um, in mathematics typing. Uh, that is, when you have a formula, uh, if you, if you had just typed this x squared delta m to tech, it would not have put a little space between the x squared and the delta sign there. But it's been traditional in mathematics that whenever you have a delta uh, 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 an infinitesimal spe specified by delta or by d, like dm, you put a little space in front of it to separate it off from the rest of the formula. So somebody would say uh, x dx. There will be a little extra space there uh, between the x and the d than if, uh, if they were all together in a formula meaning x times d times x because dx is a, it means something to mathematicians. So when you're typing calculus things, you have deltas or something else in front of it, you have to sometimes remember that, that there's a space there that, that's a matter of judgment uh, as to whether this is, a, uh, you know, uh, 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 sometimes you put it in an infraction, you don't. If you're saying delta x over delta y, you don't put it in front of the, in front of the delta y. Um, so, um, uh, so I had to adjust the spacing there. But first of all, the x squared, I guess I ought to mention that. To get a superscript, you, you say up arrow. Um, so up arrow two, up arrow two, and gives you x squared. But then I put this thin space between after the two and before the delta. So this uh, this backslash comma is uh, means a thin space. Backslash comma is what you, s you stick in if you like a little more space. The backslash exclamation point is the opposite. It take, means take out a thin space and and put it together uh, back up by a thin space. So backslash comma is a thin space. There's also a thick space backslash semicolon, which uh, is the typical space that you actually have around equal signs and, and around unequal signs. There's a thick space. If you you can see you can see the thick space um, here uh, uh, before after the zero and be, before that less than or equal sign. That's a thick space. Um, uh, the thin space is uh, typically used in front of there. It's a little bit thinner. It's a space between. If you have a, if you have something like log x, there's a thin space between the word log and x. Tech will put that one in for you automatically. But here I had to put this thin space in because it's a convention in calculus. Before dx or, or delta x or something like that, you put it thin space. Okay. Now here's the next one. Um, delta x uh, right arrow zero. 
Now, we, again, we have a right arrow sign on our on our uh, machine, so we just type it. Um, we just type it the easy way. Otherwise, if you're doing it at SCORE or some other place, you don't have that on the keyboard at Xerox. I guess you don't. You you would type R T arrow or whatever they call it there, uh, and and you have to have a control sequence that uh, somebody would have to make up for if you don't have it. That would that would get you this this uh, symbol. But as far as tech is concerned, this symbol is pretty much like an equal sign. It has the same spacing around it as equal signs do. Okay. For homogeneous rod of constant cross section, also delta m equals rho delta x. Here's again a thin space after the rho. Okay. Now I I type rho thin space delta x. Uh, rho is is one of those characters I don't have on my keyboard, so I had to type R H O. Okay. I didn't have delta either for that matter. And then m over l, rho equals m slash l. Uh, is, I guess, the obvious way to type that. Okay. Now we get to something more interesting. Hence, ah, now we get this. This is a displayed formula. Now, displayed formulas are even more expensive. So, so uh, in the old days, so they would. Uh, it usually meant a lot of handwork, especially. So, that, so we put two dollar signs before and after a displayed formula. Okay. So, double dollar sign means this is a display. Something that means you stop your paragraph where you are. Essentially, I mean, it tells Tech that says stop the paragraph where you are, add a little extra space, uh, uh, and center something that's coming after. Okay. Now, uh, let's do this display formula uh, one step at a time. I sub y. Uh, so down arrow for subscripts. I told you about up arrow for superscripts, but a down arrow gives gives I sub y equals. That's easy. Now we got this integral sign here. Okay. Integral sign is int. And then integral signs have these other things on which we treat just like subscripts and superscripts. So you can give the superscript first or the subscript first. It doesn't matter. I gave here, I gave the, zero, the, the subscript first. So I say sub zero, super L. Okay. Uh, all of these examples, by the way, have a sim simple one character as a subscript. If it was more than one character, I would just put the whole thing in braces. Uh, tech will, if you don't put it in braces, tech assumes the very first character is, is the superscript. Uh, I put a space after this L, but that didn't mean anything to tech. No, it's in, it's a space is in, is in, in a double dollar sign, same as in dollar signs, it doesn't matter. Uh, a space, tech won't, you know, will ignore that space, it does its own spacing. Here's x squared, okay, superscript 2, and then in front of the dm, I want to uh, have a thin space. This is a calculus convention. In front of a differential, you put a thin space. So I put my thin space in there. Comes the equal sign. Now the next one is very, is almost you, you you know this is trivial. This is integral sub zero super l x squared. Here I didn't leave a space between the l and the x, just to show you that tech doesn't know you know doesn't you know if it's if the l isn't in braces, it's gonna it's only one symbol long. The superscript only lasts one symbol unless you put a brace there and give a more complicated formula. And then x up super super 2 uh, row, again, no space there. So the, that's why the, the superscript is only a 2. And a uh, little thin space before the dx. Okay. Now we've got something new with fraction here, row l cubed over 3. Um, and uh, what, you, what you do there is you use the word over uh, with a backslash in it. In fact, it looks very much like that one, except uh, um, except it's this one. Um, and now I put the whole thing in braces. I put the whole fraction in braces so that tech would know where the fraction begins and where the fraction ends. Um, and then I said rho L cubed over 3. Double dollar sign to end the display. The whole thing gets centered and properly spaced out. OK, now this is. Um, uh, this is the the formula, and and um, the over. You say how how does over know how far to how far to go? What goes over what? Well, it goes to the left till it gets to a left brace or um, or something. Uh, there's one other case called a backslash left that uh, that would that would stop over. If I if I didn't have those braces there, and I said row l cubed over three without the braces, it would have taken this whole this whole formula here and then put a bar over it and a three underneath that. You would have had that long thing. It wouldn't make too much sense mathematically, but maybe someday we'll think of something that it means. But that's be over with a three. All right. So that's uh, that's a displayed formula. Now, this if this same formula had appeared in the middle of a text without the double dollar signs, 
it would have gone right in that paragraph there and it only had dollar signs around it. And it also Tech would have said it in a different style. Tech would not have used such big integral signs in, in the middle of a paragraph as it does in a display. Tech would have, Tech would have cho chosen a small integral sign instead of a big integral sign. So there's a different style actually used in a display than in, in the middle of a paragraph. And there's four styles altogether. There's, a, there's the display style, which is your grand and glorious style where you use big signs and you raise superscripts a little bit higher, actually. Uh, then there's the text style, which is what you normally get in the paragraph. Then there's the style that's used in subscripts and superscripts, which is uh, small, smaller type size. And, uh, and uh, you don't put thin spaces in, uh, you don't put spaces around plus signs in the subscripts, and, and tech knows that. And, uh, or, or equal signs, for that matter. And then, um, uh, then there's the fourth style is called the script script style, which is for the subscripts or superscripts of subscripts or superscripts. And that's script script style is used for for, for all the all the remaining levels. If you have two to the 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 two, first two is in your regular size. The next two is in you know, like ten, ten point. The next one maybe seven. The next one five point, and then you stay in five point af afterwards. But you get you get smaller for the first. There's these four styles, and usually the styles are chosen automatically appropriate to the con to the condition. If you put it in do double dollar sign, you got display style. If you if you got single dollar sign, you got text style. Text style has smaller integral signs. Okay. Now and then we, let's continue though. It says or, and then we have this other formula. And um, here is another, this other formula shows another difference between the styles. Because look, look at this one third here. This one third was, was not in the same form as that, as that fraction, L cubed over three. The one third is actually, you know, the, I mean, if I had stayed in the display style, it would make this one third as a big one, a big bar, and a big three. Okay? But that's re that one third is really in text style. So in order to indicate that, I had to be, I, so the second line, the only tricky thing about the second line, I did my, well, my, I, the only, the, I guess the, almost the only tricky thing was that I, I went into text style at the end of it. And so at, after this equal sign, I said text style, 1 over 3 m l squared, and that, uh, and that uh, um, got me the one third. Otherwise, the one third would have come as, it wouldn't look so bad that way, but I wanted to mimic what, what they had here. Oh yeah, the other tricky thing about this is I got big parentheses around here. If I had just typed a regular parenthesis and then done my M over L, then that would be a teeny tiny little parenthesis. Because as far as tech knows, a parenthesis is just just any other symbol. Uh, uh, it does. They don't have to match particularly uh, uh, because it's surprising to mathematicians how often. But it turns out we often write formulas that that have a left parenthesis and, no, and, and nothing matching it on the right-hand side sometimes, or a, usually a left brace and nothing matching on the right-hand side or something like that. Often happens. Uh, so, uh, in fact, uh, uh, Tech doesn't insist that there be a right parenthesis for every left parenthesis. Sometimes there's a right bracket or something like that. But, but Tech does, but if you want Tech to choose uh, the right size of left parenthesis, then you can say left, backslash left, and backslash right. And then it, it chooses the, the 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 size based on what's in between them. Um, so if this were in, and so so here I said backslash left, and then I gave the symbol that I wanted to be a left of, and it's a left parenthesis. And then I said backslash right, and and give a parenthesis for a right. I could have made that a, some other symbol after the right. And that that says choose the choose the proper size. If there was a whole matrix or something inside there, it would choose some great big huge parenthesis for it. But it chooses the size for that for that formula. So that's that's the other thing about this line. Okay, now I think I'll go on. Uh, why question? I yeah, question? Uh, how, why didn't you need to do that with the integral sign? Why didn't I do that with the integral sign? Because the, the integral sign is um, uh, is is considered a is an, a operator that changes to, to its sizes in displays, while parentheses are considered delimiters. There's a difference between operators and delimiters. There's two kind of things. Integral sign is considered an operator, so is a big sigma sign, a big summation sign, and there are and these are also explained in that same appendix. Um, there's a list of about ten operators and a list of a bunch of delimiters, and, the, and those are considered different things uh, to to mathematicians. Uh, the spacing is different around them, and so on. So so you so you you you, you learn to distinguish one from the uh, other. The delimiters are the things that, that, that are for grouping, like parentheses, typically. Parentheses, Question? braces. Yes? Uh, I forgot your name. Lorraine, 
Why didn't you have to put those, did that backslash left parentheses also is used as a brace? Why didn't we have to put braces to that? Yeah, that's right. Backslash left and right, since they have to be, they have to, to be matched just like braces do, then over knows not to go outside of, of backslash left and right. That's right. Over, oh, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Over, no, you could, it wouldn't hurt to put braces in there, but it doesn't help either. Don't need them in, in between left and right, you don't. Yeah. Another question? Another question, right? Yes, on uh, the, the textile, does the, the textile just apply to the next unit? Textile uh, applies for, from then on after. Uh, so actually the, the whole one-third ML squared is all in textile? That's all in textile, that's right. If I wanted to get back into display style, I could, I could, I could, type, I could have written right here, I could have said uh, disp style after. Uh, that would be almost indistinguishable, but the superscript of the two would, would have moved up. Uh, uh, actually, they, they aren't in display style with that, too. They're, 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 a, a superscript in display style tends to be a little higher. Well, I'm not sure what they, yeah, they do the same in the numerator. But uh, on the main line, the, that's, that superscript, too, on the X there is slightly higher than it, than it would be in the text. Uh, it's a funny thing, but they do that, and uh, so does tech. Okay, so, so if you wanted that, that uh, in display style, you can, you can revert to it again. Or you could put, or you, or you could put the whole thing in braces like this. Okay. It would have been a mistake, though, to put braces and then say textile one over three. Because then the one would have been in textile, but not the whole fraction. Okay. So here's two sets of braces would have done it. Okay. Good, good questions. All right. Now, uh, let's go back to this first equation here. This one had a square root in it. This is a display. Also has a number. And uh, how do we type that? Well, the answer is um, I typed it like this: t equals two pi. Well, actually, there's also a pi on the keyboard, but I wrote it out. Um, sqrt for the square root symbol, and then a brace because it's a, it's a square root of more than one thing. If I had square root of just one thing, I wouldn't need. I would I would just say square root two or something. But I. I can put braces, and then I over MGL is the thing that I'm taking the square root of, okay? And then to get this equation number here in the right margin, EQ number 5. And tech will do the right thing. If it doesn't fit, it'll drop it down in lines and things like that. So that's the, uh, the way I type that one, and a similar, there's a similar um, formula at the bottom of the page. Okay, so now what happened when I first put this into the... Uh, I did this yesterday morning, and I first put it into the uh, XGP, and so I got the the thing out, and it looked uh, actually uh, pretty much like the printed book. In fact, I was amazed that it came out looking... Uh, it, I, I was lucky this time. I didn't have any uh, bugs the first the first uh, pass. But um, the... Um, uh, but I, but looking at it, there was one thing I, I thought I would like to change, and that is I would like to leave a little more space before this comma. This comma looked a little, a little too close. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It depends on the formula and the environment. I mean, if this had been, hadn't been such a tall letter L there, it probably, it probably would have looked okay to me. So I decided afterwards I'd put a thin space there. So that was my second proofreading. You know, I, I look at something and I say, well, stick that in. So it's so easy to put in. Uh, so, so I did it. I put a thin space, in fact, between the pi and the, and the square root 2. Uh, uh, that's, that's sort of optional, but uh, it looked a little more psychologically okay to have a little thin space there. So I added, so actually, after this first pass, all I had to change was the, uh, was that, ex, that putting that thin space there, and it looked okay. Now let's go to page 400, um, and, and I'll show you why I got a little bit scared about page 400. Uh, these are in bold face. Um, and uh, so we were switching fonts also in the middle of mass mode to get this bold face. Okay, now, <clears throat> um, all this is going to be on a handout that you're going to be getting, so I'm going to talk a little fast, but uh, you'll, um, you'll see what I did. Okay, so tangential vectors, um, uh, start out the paragraph just as usual, but make that in bold face. This is an N dash here, uh, tangential vectors. Okay, I left a quad space after the title. As the point P moves along a given curve in the XY plane, we may imagine its position as being specified by the length of arc S. Um, now, actually, uh, uh, this is a, ca a case of a psychologically bad break. I could put the double arrow in there. It wouldn't be a good place to, to you know, typically mathematical convention, uh, length of arc S or, you know, the, the integer N 
uh, you don't want to break between uh, between the descriptive thing and the symbol. Uh, but some, but on the other hand, uh, you say we see that n is, then you wouldn't want to break between n and is. Uh, so sometimes it's before a short formula, sometimes after. But typically a short formula, there's this psychologically bad break. You, you might, uh, if you're fussy, uh, put put that refinement in anyway. Um, uh, some chosen reference point p sub zero on the curve. Okay, then you get a vector with boldface in it, and here's the way I had to type that. I had to to uh, go out of math I, in, inside the formula. I had to make a box in order to get the boldface r. So I said h box of bf of r, and that made uh, now h box. And I'll talk more about boxes later. But that puts you, that that is sort of a, a general purpose way to get tech to go to to typeset something that goes in a horizontal line. It, or in this case, R was only one symbol. But if I, if I had several symbols, they would all get put into a box. And then put this horizontal line into a box um, and uh, treat that box as a, as a single unit. And that can be used in the middle of a formula. So I, so I said H box boldface R equals H box boldface I X plus H box boldface J Y. And I got all these, bold, this, this R, I, and J are in boldface in that formula. Okay, from O to P of X, Y. And um, here's, that's a capital letter O. And uh, P of X, Y, if you look carefully, there's a thin space after that comma there. And tech does that for you. It does, you know, after that comma, uh, that thin space got in. Question, quick? Yes, excuse me. What would, what would have happened if you'd slash H, H box but left the braces around it and everything else? It would else? have said, I would have got an error message saying you can't do that in math mode. Uh, you can't change fonts in math mode. Okay, so boldface is a switch of font, and and uh, we're going to talk about error messages tomorrow. The whole lecture tomorrow is about error messages. Okay, now um, um, and uh, then I got tired. Then I looked ahead and I saw a boldface all over the place, and I said, "Uh oh, I wouldn't want to type H box of all B B F. It's going to be a real nuisance." Okay, so then I made myself a nice little. A, a nice little trick that a wizard would tell me how to do that I could just type an infinity in front of something I wanted to be bold. So I, I, I made up a special long, a special thing that uh, those people next week will learn how to do. But the, the, the gist of it is from now on, I can just type infinity in front of it and it's going to, and, and that infinity is from now on, I can't use it for, for the infinity symbol anymore, but I, I can use it to make, to, to boldify whatever comes after. Um, so, so to get the dr by ds, I just put it to get a, a bold r. I, I, I put a, I, I put it in uh, the infinity in front of the r. Okay. So now I kept on typing this, and I got to use these infinities uh, quite often. You see, delta uh, in bold r over delta s, and so on. Infinity i delta x over infinity s. That's this formula here. Okay. So I was getting, I was getting a lot of bold face variables just by typing a single character in front of it. It was very nice. Okay, and then I got to this, and I said, uh-oh, what is this funny symbol over here? I don't have that in any of my fonts, <laughs> and how am I going to, to do this? Okay, so now we have this Metafont program that allows you to design a new symbol. <laughs> um, but what I actually wound up doing was, um, was, uh, was, was, was faking it by using a, a Grav accent and putting it on top of a rule. And... Um, and uh, so I, I, de I defined anyway a, uh, a vector operation which puts a vector o over things in a half arrow symbol, which was all based on a whole, whole bunch of sp spacing around, lowering up, lowering up and down, using a, a grav accent in the wrong place and putting it together. Now, um, again, you just go to a wizard and say, "Give me that symbol," and that's what he does. Okay? And uh, well, I was kind of lucky because it came out looking fine. See? <laughs> okay. Okay. I had to play around with this twice. I, well, first, I put the arrow a little too high over it, but it, but it came out okay. All right. So um, now we're almost done with this uh, with this lesson. But you see, there's something new coming up in you know, you, these equation numbers. Everything is the same as as we've seen before. So when you look at the handout, you'll see that everything is the same until we get to this limit. A limit is a, is a is something like an operator, like that integral sign that we had before, except that. It, 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 um, except that uh, the things things go underneath it instead of to the right of it, uh, but you type it just as um, Tech knows that LIM, uh, well Basic knows that LIM is one of these special symbols, and so um, you see I just got to find um, the way I typed that formula two is here. So I typed LIM 
for backslash lim to get lim. That's in Roman. It's not uh, italic letters. You know, those aren't italic lim there. And then subscript on it. Now this time the subscript is complicated. It's not just a single sim. So I put the subscript in braces and it's delta s right arrow zero. Okay, so that's the way I got the limit there. And then of then the thing that the limit is applied to, putting in braces, delta bold r over delta s. And I said equation number two. All right. And uh, is a unit vector and also on that's uh, the same thing goes on here. And notice one other thing happened now when we when we put this arrow over over the symbol, um, there wasn't room for it in the next line, and and uh, and you know the the, uh, uh, the paragraph this these two lines had to be a little split further apart than the, than the rest of them, and uh, and actually Tech does that also as you see when it came out uh, when it came out you see the same thing the same thing worked out with this uh, uh, coming out of the thing. All right, so so um, uh, now I mentioned handout. And uh, those are those are up here. Please be, get one when you leave. There's three parts to the handout. First of all, the first two pages tell exactly what code was used to type set the handout you had yesterday. So you can look at that and see what what was to get to to what you had yesterday. The secondly is a uh, is an excerpt of this exa calculus example we've just done. And the third thing is exactly what was typed to tech, to, which produces the uh, calculus handout. All right. One more quick comment. Um, those of you who have a co who have uh, guest accounts on the system, I suppose your initials are A, B, C. You should say when you first approach the system, you should you should say L um, A B C slash T E X. Um, this logs you in with your initials slash T E X. Don't just use your initials if you've got one of these new guest accounts. Then when you print things on the Dover, it's going to go into the slot. There's a whole bunch of, uh, of pigeonholes there. It goes into the slot under T for tech guest. You are called, your, your official name to the system is tech guest. And uh, not under ABC, but it will be under tech guest. Uh, is where you find your output when you, when you print it on the Dover. Okay? <clears throat> Here are the handouts. Hi, here are your handouts. Here's a handout.